The fight for gun control policy has come to a point where it seems like all of the things we think will sway the gun debate don't, because the shootings and gun violence continue unabated. On Friday, yet another gunman went on a rampage, terrorizing the city of Santa Monica, California. When he was done, he'd killed four people and injured five others before being shot to death by the police in a gun battle. According to police, he had 1,300 rounds of ammunition on him. When it comes to solving gun violence, there is no magic bullet that will serve, sorry, to bring the two sides together to come up with a solution. Instead of waiting on elected officials, the momentum for change has got to come from a cultural shift among the American people when we are finally no longer willing to accept rampant gun violence. You were, anybody who follows you on Twitter, Michael, knows that you were right on this Santa Monica story. You were, as you have been on all the gun violence stuff, you know, immediately saying, let's pay attention, let's focus on this. And yet it, it had this sort of undercurrent in the news on that day. And even in the day since, it hasn't captured our attention. It's like we're, we're just sort of inured to it. If we couldn't get a watered-down background check bill passed after Newtown. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, Democrats and Republicans alike, yep. uh, we have a long fight ahead of us. And what happened on Friday in Santa Monica, you're absolutely right. People just didn't pay attention. And again, it was an AR-15. Yep. Right? That tore apart people. Yep. This isn't a weapon that you shoot deer with. This yep. is a weapon that you tear things apart with. So I think that um, we all have to do better. Yep. We all have to, you know, it, it, to, to the mothers and, and fathers in, 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 in Newtown and Sandy Hook, um, we have to fight for them. For the mothers and fathers in Chicago who are losing their children on a daily basis. We had 24 shootings in 48 hours in New York City just last weekend. Yep. An 11 year old, year old got shot in the neck and paralyzed. Yes. Young Tutu in, 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 in Bed Stuy, Brooklyn. And we have to stand up for young people like that and continue the fight. I'm not going to give up. Right. And, and people you can follow me on Twitter, but I'm not going <laughs> to give up. Well, I think people keep saying, right, that, I mean, we were looking at the, at the mass shooters' weapons from 1982 mm -hmm. to 2012. Of those weapons, 143 weapons used in mass shootings, and 71 of them are, in fact, semi-automatic handguns, sure. right? So when, when people say, oh, these policies wouldn't make any difference, in fact, they would. When we look at how many of them were illegally obtained, this is uh, data from Mother Jones, 49 of them out of the 62 were, were illegally obtained. So it, in fact, would make a difference to have these kinds of policies. And yet, I wonder about this, this photos question. You guys got to talking a bit about the yeah. Osama bin Laden photos yeah. during the break. There was another instance where the public doesn't seem to have had a right to know. We didn't ever get to see those photos. And this is where the problem comes in. You know, and, and I really understand. I've got a nine-year-old daughter. Yep. So I really understand where folks are coming from in, sure. in Connecticut, and I respect that. But the fact is that when we start parceling out what you can see and what you can't see, uh, as has been suggested by wise folks on this panel, you end up assuming the impact will be this or will be that. And we take the people out of the process. You know, we were talking in our break here about how members of Congress get to see certain photos, get to see certain things. We make them a, a priestly class, a group of high priests. They are better than us. They can look at the photos, but we can't. Well, with all due respect, I can name you a number of members of Congress who I don't think will respond as maturely or as well as the average American. So why do we take the average American out of the process? That's my concern. Well, I mean, I, well, I think because part of it, it makes it easier to get it done. Right. Uh, I know. If you hide stuff and then you stand behind, well, I told you, representatives, and 99% of the American public still don't know. You've mm -hmm. accomplished your political purpose of keeping it exactly. safe. Exactly. And those and representatives. This is the kind of censorship that we cannot yeah. abide. We well, cannot although, abide. although ordinary, I mean, I hear you on the like ordinary Americans, and yet, like, we had a Cheerios commercial with a beautiful little <laughs> interracial yes. baby. And and the white mom and the black know, daddy and the ordinary Americans lost their minds. So, so there's a part of me that, like, sometimes I'm like, yes, ordinary Americans should know. And sometimes I'm like, whoa, ordinary but Americans. Melissa Harris Perry, <laughs> Melissa Harris Perry you, you know a little more because of that incident. You oh, sure. About, a about more. the world. Yeah, and sure. So I gotcha. Can we, if we are to evolve as human beings, hmm. information? I think information is pretty useful. Well, in that but process. you know, it's not actually just information. I believe we do need to see in order to know. I really think mm -hmm. we can't uh, we can't imagine what this hmm. is. We need to see it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that seeing is sufficient to hmm. knowing. Right. And so yeah. that's why I actually respect the bill that Governor Malloy put in place, even though I myself, as a historian of photography, want people people to see. Mm -hmm. But I respect it because it has a sunset provision. It's saying that we have a moratorium for a year, mm -hmm. which is really asking us to have this discussion. All right, so it, bring, it yes. brings down the, yeah. the emotional piece. Yes, let well. us have the discussion. 
and we can't guarantee what the end of the discussion will be, but we can bring not the priestly class, but the whole public into this discussion. But by the time we have this discussion, that's right. the emotion that's necessary and proper to move the ball forward hmm. is gone. Well, you know, we and thought after well, the killings that there, what that emotion, that was going to do it, right? Yeah, we but you thought, thought wrong. And, and it but takes that, another incident and another incident and another incident and more and more deaths. And so here is a clear case, I think, yeah. of where censorship is, is, is playing right into the hands of gun proponents, playing right against the interests of the people who want these photographs sure. to yeah. be private. Can I tell you something yeah. else that plays into it? Just a quick one. It is the, and I know this is a tough one, because if I was one of these parents, I would, I would want to not have this discussion. But, but there's, there's an immediate rush in to say, let's not politicize this event. Let's let's have a decent period where we don't talk about it or we don't. Yeah, you know, but we want to. We right. want. We want well, that, but what I'm saying is, whether you want to or not, the bottom line is that that when we shut the dialogue down and when we slow the process down, that benefits the status quo. Mm -hmm. And and the fact of the matter is, a lot of a lot of people in Washington are like, well, why is the NS mm -hmm. uh, the NRA so silent? Mm -hmm. Why are they holding back? Well, I can tell you why. Silent. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. They are silent and they were holding back because they want to dial of course, that of conversation. Yeah, yeah. Down. Yeah, that's right. All right. right? So, so and, I, and if you want change, you want to dial that conversation well, up. Well, speaking, speaking of dialing conversation up, especially on the issues of information and who has a right to know, we're going to turn the conversation just a bit in terms of talking about protecting privacy to the NSA conversation. Can we really protect and, and liberate information at the same time? Okay, we're going to get to NSA in just one second. But, but before we can get there, there's too much happening at this table that I need, I need Nerd Man to be part of. So, so there, were, there were a couple of, of really important things that showed up in the, in the commercial that I, I just want to bring our viewers for. The first was this conversation about Rodney King yeah. and the Rodney King video and the idea that that Rodney King video was definitive. So I, so I want to ask you this, Judge, because obviously the, the video was insufficient for conviction, right? You would think, right. I, I mean, so it was, it was sufficient for a kind of urban uprising, right? It made people feel like they knew what had happened, but, but the jury in seeing it doesn't make um, a conviction despite seeing this video. Talk to me then about why you still see the video as so critical to what happens in this Well, moment. the video is what got the federal government involved in the second prosecution. Mm -hmm. So remember how it went. First, the video. Second, tremendous outrage. Right. Third, Cry for prosecution. Fourth, outrage about the acquittal in state court. Yep. Fifth, cry for federal prosecution. Sixth, federal prosecution, conviction, end of story. Mm -hmm. So the video, without it, it would have just been another urban tale. Mm -hmm. It would have just been a story well, where the police are given the benefit of the doubt mm -hmm. by white folks and indicted once again by black folks. The it, video brought the communities together. If I, if I can jump on top of that for a minute, I think that for most white people, we didn't think black folks got it this bad by the police. Mm -hmm. And once we saw mm -hmm. that, for the past 25 years, now mm -hmm. it's a conversation of police brutality, and we believe it. So Abner Louima, Amnu Diallo, we believe Correct. in police brutality. Correct. So that changed the whole consciousness. It's like the Bull, it's like the bull Connor video. That's exactly it's like right. the Bloody right. Sunday. Once you see those yeah. images, it makes it real. Remember, 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 another important aspect of this mm -hmm. is that the photographs can actually also backfire so they yeah. can show that someone is a victim they can show the impunity of the of the violence and the perpetrators you have to control how the story around the photograph is used well i can get let me, there's a great example from another place of the killing of a number of Jesuit priests in El Salvador in yeah. 1989. And there were photos released, yeah. and it, it was horrific. Yeah. And uh, I was shocked at the time by the response. I remember it very well. Of a lot of people saying, well, boy, that's how it is in El Salvador. Yes. Mm. That's you know, right. it wasn't, it wasn't. That's right. The United States yeah. government has ties to people that are doing horrible things. It is horrible no things Salvador. happen there. Yeah. And so, uh, again, it, you are so yeah. wise in your yeah. argument that we must yeah. put these in context. No. Yeah. They have to come in context. Mm -hmm. And, again, if we circle ourselves around, yep. uh, I think that, that this gun debate is alive at this point. And so these questions, the context is there to some extent. It is. And but, that's yeah. but I think this point matters to, to me, I think, a lot. Because we see often gruesome images of, of happening to all kinds of bodies. But if we think those are the kinds of bodies yes. that deserve that's those sorts of... Or that that just happens. Or that that just happens, yeah. right? So yeah. you, you were talking about the just the up-close, beautiful, smiling image of Hydea Pendleton, oh, yeah. right? And, and the sense 
sense of, oh, yeah. this is the girl this shouldn't happen to. But for many folks, you know, the, the weeping black mother on an urban right. street corner, it's like, well, yeah, that's what black moms do. Their kids get killed and they cry on TV. And it becomes an ordinary part of our assumptions about what kinds of body. And it's part of where the Newtown power could come. But that's what yeah. the is that those changed, kids are, right? are not supposed well, to be the ones. That's right. And that's why yeah, Newtown changed the conversation because they were white. Right, then they changed the conversation. And they, and they were, and they were in, and they were in school, and they and were so young, I mean, and they were babies. So right. right. That's right. really important because right. showing is always a matter of they, power. They who were... shows? Who is shown? Mm -hmm. And what is shown? That's not what was expected. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where the power of these comes in. But Break we can't, we can miss the basic point that we don't really have control in the first instance of how people are going to react to what they see. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why the government wants censorship, and that's why we have to fight against it. Because in many, many cases, the people's reaction is correct. Mm -hmm. In many cases, their emotional reaction causes politics to change. Mm -hmm. And so we must not let these pictures be censored. So, so I, I love this one. We'll, we'll, we'll pause here and we'll come back on NSA because this question of how, how the people respond, the people definitely responded this week to the sense that, that maybe we're, uh, you know, we're living in a government where people are reading our emails. So we, we come back. All right.